Hey guys, welcome to another video. In this video, we will go ahead and go over important safety settings for the DJI Mini 3 Pro because each setting is set for the drone to fly differently and depending on how you're gonna use it and where you're going to fly it, you need to know these steps to ensure that you have a safe flight and you're able to take the most advantage of your DJI Mini 3 Pro drone. Let's jump into settings and we're gonna go ahead and focus on the safety settings. And as you can see here, the first things we see is flight assistance. So we see three options here. We see bypass, brake, and off. So let's talk about bypass. What bypass allows or what it does is it allows the drone to detect any object and when it's really near and it needs to take action, it's going to go around the object. This option is really good if you are in control of your atmosphere. You know that if it's gonna go around it, it's gonna have open space, free space to continue on, and you know that the obstacles won't move so it won't crash even if it goes around it. It's great if you're recording yourself or if it's following you, and that way it can continue to do what you want it to do and not stop, or if you're running or walking, you're, you don't have to go back and you know control it again. It'll just keep following you and just go around the objects. So right under bypass mode, there's another option called disabled sideways flight. So what is the purpose of this option? So you may be hovering happily with no obstacles flying your drone and directly besides you, you could be and directly besides your drone, there's a tree branch and there's no sensors to tell you that it's there. And there's no video for you to see literally what's to the side of your drone. And let's say you can't even see your drone. So as far as you're concerned, you're in a clear. You hit the left stick and your drone hits a tree. So as a new beginner, we should treat sideways flight as a blind spot, especially if the drone is very far from us and it's very hard to see. So this is where this option comes in. It doesn't even allow us to fly sideways. A great feature to use if we're just learning and we just want to have minimal risks as, as possible since we're just learning the basics and the essentials of flying a drone. The next option that we see is brake. And what this option allows us to do is when we fly the drone and the object is detected and we go into very close range to this object, the drone will just simply stop. This option is useful because it allows us to do more once the drone has stopped. I say that it gives us more options because maybe the best course of action for the drone is not to go around the object. Maybe it's better to fly over. So that is why I mean that it gives us more options. So we're able to then take control to see what is the best action to do next. If it's flying over the objects or just going directly back, we have that freedom instead of letting uh, the, the drone to do its own thing and fly, you know, around the object, especially if we are not aware uh, or we're just not sure what's around that said object. So the next option that we see here is off. This turns off obstacle avoidance altogether. So if you're going to go fly into a tree and you want it to hit the tree, it's going to hit the tree. Now, this is the most dangerous option, but this option does have its purpose in some scenarios. For example, if you're in a very small space and you don't want the obstacle avoidance to trigger the drone to move, although you are in a space that you know the drone will not hit, then yeah, for example, like indoors, it's very, it's a good option if you know exactly where the drone is going and you can see that it's not going to hit it, even though it's close to hitting it, that is a good option because that way the sensors are not triggered and the drone doesn't go to the right or to the left and then hit something else near it. So that is the, you know, the only way I see myself using it. The first option that we see here is max altitude. What this does is it's, it limits on how high we can fly the drone. This can be used for law regulation so we don't go over the limit. As well, we get to control the drone on how high it can go, if depending if it's cloudy and we don't want the drone to go very high because it can then get wet and it could cause damages to the drone. Or if we just want have a have a set limit and have a controlled space for the drone. The next option that we see is max distance. This allows us to control how far the drone can fly away from us. This is useful to make sure the drone is within line of sight at all times. The third option that we see is auto return to home altitude. What this option does, it allows you to set a fixed altitude of the drone to come back. For example, if you set the altitude to 80 meters, then the drone, once activated to return to home, it will first reach 80 meters and then start to return to its home location. 
This option is very useful when there is trees or buildings in the way or any other obstacles and lets the drone go a little bit higher. That way it will not crash. So it's good to first know, you know, your obstacles, your trees, the buildings. It's good to know approximately how high it is and then actually fly your drone way higher than those obstacles, the buildings, the trees, and then you'll get a good feeling on how high you need to set the limit for the return to home um, and you will have a good idea. The next option that we see is update home point. This is a very important feature. This feature allows for the drone to change its return to home location to the new location of where you are with the controller. This is very important in the case that you need to move and you are no longer at the original spot that you took off with the drone. If you are moving constantly, always update the home point location. In the case that the drone loses signal, you're going to do yourself a great favor to have it updated to the most precise location and have the ability to get your drone safely. The reason I say this is because the next option that we see will determine if our drone will come back in peace or not. So let's go ahead and look into the other option, which is under advanced safety settings. We click into that. We have here more options, which is signal lost. We have three options, return to home, descend, or hover. So the first option that we see here is signal lost, return to home. This option allows the drone to return to its last, last set return to home location because like we said, we have the option to update it constantly. So it will return to home to the last time we updated it. This option is useful because it will reconnect back once it starts to return, unless you're moving further away from it. But if you stay still and it starts to head back, it's gonna reconnect way before it even lands. So use this option in a case that it does not reconnect and you're okay with the location it's coming back, AKA it's not water, it's actually land. So this is, you know, commonly used if it's in, in, in the ground and you know, you're okay with it and you're able to physically go back there and get it. This settings is very crucial because if you are using the drone and you're on a boat, you cannot have the drone go back to its return to home location. If you moved from the original location, so let's say, for example, you are on a boat and the drone took off from the boat, most likely the boat will have already moved. So in the case that something happens to your controller or your phone, that, you know, that drone will go back to where it originally, you know, started off at. And if it's where the boat is not at no more, it's just going to land in water. So, you know, you of course can go back with your boat or whatever, but the other two factors, which is malfunction of the controller or your phone dies, you really can't do much and you don't want to put yourself in that position. So always be careful with that. From my own experience, I would not set it to return to home. I would set it to hover because if it hovers, then with the boat, get closer to the drone and it will, you know, most likely reconnect. So I think that is the safest. That's what I use when I'm on a boat and hopefully it never happens to you guys where, you know, the drone just crashes into the water because that sucks. All right. The next option that we see here is descend. This option makes the drone descend from where it is when it loses connection. This is not a good option if you're flying a drone from longer distance since you will not be there to get it and you do not know where it's going down to. It could be in a small puddle or a river or it can be in some awkward place that you can't even get to. So be careful with that. Also be careful with this option because it, it's descending. It's not doing anything that will help you reconnect back to your controller. At least return to home, it'll start heading your direction and you really don't have to move. But descend just goes straight down and let's say it goes to private property. That's an issue right there. So be careful with that option. Use it if you are in an open field and you can see your drone and where and whenever wherever your drone is at, you can actually get close to it by being at the bot, like literally below it. So that is the only option that I would see myself or the only scenario I see myself using the descent feature. The third option that we see here is hover. This option allows the drone to stay in place and not move at all. And it will just hover until you get closer to the drone. 
Again, a good option if you want the drone to stay in place in case it loses connection or it's intentional and you know that the best thing for the drone to do is stay still and not move and you just go to it and get that connection back. The last settings that we will go over is under advanced safety settings, emergency propeller stop. We have two options, emergency only and anytime. So let's see which is the best to use. So it all depends on the situation and how experienced you are to use this feature because this is a really good feature, but if you accidentally use it and you weren't trying to use it, then your drone is dead. If we set it to emergency only, the motors can only be stopped mid-flight in an emergency such as a collision or motor sailing, aircraft rolling, or out of control, or ascending or descending very quickly. So it stops the combination stick command from working. And if we set it to any time, the motors can be stopped mid-flight using the combination stick command. Stopping the motors in mid-flight will almost certainly cause the aircraft to crash. As a beginner and learning the basics on how to use a drone, keep it to emergency only. You don't want to accidentally trigger it. So keep that on to emergency only. I myself keep it at emergency only. I will not have it set to any time because I don't want to accidentally trigger it. Not sure where or when is the best situation to use that option. You must be a very skilled drone flyer to know when. To me, I don't know. Maybe in a zombie apocalypse, you're trying to use it as an attack. I don't know. Thanks guys for watching this video. When I first got my drone, I was so excited. I really just wanted to fly it. And I flew it for the first time and I didn't even go over these settings and I should have. These settings are very important. I know a lot of people like me when I first was thinking about buying my drone, I was doing all this investigation, all this comparisons of other drones and seeing the reviews. But it is also important before you even fly your drone to actually study the settings and what what it does and why. And that way you can have a safe flight and you can enjoy your Mini 3 Pro and other drones that you get down the road. So thanks guys for watching my video. I'm going to continue making more and I hope to see you guys and thanks for everyone who clicked on it to see it. See ya.